My favorite thing about my job is actually just getting to know my students. When I was going through school, I liked networking and getting to know people in general. One of the nicer things about doing a project like Canoe that I think is really beneficial to our students is that you're doing projects with all these other people in your field and at the companies that you're working with. Part of engineering, I, I say, is a problem-solving field. We like to figure out how to fix things. But in reality, all of them get jobs because of who they know. And so networking is a big part of that. So every year across the whole nation, there are hundreds of schools in civil engineering. They all compete through American Society of Civil Engineering. Uh, there's lots of competitions, but one of the most popular ones is Concrete Canoe. Uh, an established civil engineering school will bring a new canoe every year made entirely out of concrete. And we compete regionally, and then the winner of a region will go on to a national competition. It's meant to be play with the mix design, figure out how to make concrete float, and with, you know, just optimizing your own skill set. It started out as a senior design project where the professor in 1971 suggested to his students that they should challenge themselves by making a canoe out of concrete and seeing if they could float it down a river and race it. And they told a local school next to them that they're doing it and they also made a canoe and they raced together. And since then it's kind of kicked off and become this whole nationwide thing where every civil engineering school has a canoe. The canoe floats for two reasons. One is similar to a steel barge and other boats is the shape of it actually follows buoyancy principle where there's air inside of the boat and the air is lighter than the water. So as a result, as long as the boat doesn't tip over or capsize, it will float. So sometimes people do like alum aluminum foil boats. It's the same thing. Aluminum foil won't float on its own, but if you make it into the right shape, it'll float. We also try to make the concrete less dense than water so that if it were to break in half, it won't sink to the bottom, it'll actually come back up. The concrete itself normally is pretty heavy, so what the main component that we're doing to reduce its weight is the aggregates or the rocks in it. So we take out what would normally be sand and rocks and we put in end caps, which are foam on the ends, so that if you were to push it underneath the water completely, it would bounce back up. And that's because the styrofoam is actually what's pulling it back up. The Gherkin did great. I think a lot of people were surprised. No sinking, it was great. It was actually on the races, maybe like two inches into the water because it was so buoyant. And so a lot of it was sticking up. We call that high freeboard. It actually makes it faster if it doesn't have too much surface area in the water. I think one of the challenges we had is in the afternoon, it got really windy. And so the wind was probably pushing on that freeboard and causing some challenges for them. Overall, it was really lightweight. The cracking that they got occurred because of an accident, we'll say. When they were taking it out on the day of the races, they got some help from another school and the other school kind of picked up on the canoe while it was still strapped down and it caused it to crack. And so as the race day progressed, that crack also progressed. But it didn't compromise the canoe, it still raced. There was no water coming in as they were going. And even now, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a big crack on the side of it. They got second place on the women's slalom and third place in the men's slalom. I know a lot of schools walked around and they kept talking about our pickle. All of our projects that we do, like this competition ones, are fun. They have a day there where we display the canoe and everyone can kind of see what everyone else did. It's like a good learning experience for them, not only for the technical side of like the managing and the construction and the materials. It's also a good opportunity for the schools to kind of network and see students from other schools, you know, and kind of get to know each other because eventually they'll work with the same people that they'll see at that competition. When I was in high school, my brother was older than me. He was looking at schools, and I remember he toured a school that had all these canoes on the wall. And I remember thinking, oh, that's cool. I don't know why, but I liked it. And later when I looked for college myself, I asked, can I go to that one? I didn't even remember what school it was. So I went to that school, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. When I was a freshman, there was a class where ASE, you know, presidency or whatever came in and talked about you know, all the things that they do, including making the canoes. And I said, I want to do that because I saw your canoes on the wall. I joined as a freshman and I've been hooked ever since. I think I possibly even changed my career a little bit 
as I was doing that. Personally, I always never liked chemistry, but I saw all these other kids just figuring out the chemistry of cement, and I was like, I could figure this out too. It's a lot of trial and error, and I got hooked. I ended up staying, and I found, personally, I like doing forensics of concrete, so figuring out why it breaks and cracks, and that became my specialty area that I do. Someone once called me the concrete doctor, because I have a PhD, so I'm a concrete doctor. I can diagnose your concrete.